So I'm Masatora Goya, and then I'm a composer originally from Japan. But I started composition very late. Um, I started in writing for musical theater after I turned um, 30. And then I started writing for chamber music um, about 11 years ago. But I played rugby as a teenage boy and studied sociology. So I really didn't um, study music until I turned 30. I came um, here um, um, to the United States around that time and then started uh, writing and studying musical theater. And then eventually along the way, um, as I just you know, went up for graduate schools and stuff, and then I started writing for chamber music because my friends started asking me. And then gradually my career <laughs> sort of developed and then with a lot of um, struggles, somehow I remain writing after 10 years. And so that's basically a quick version of my life. Why don't you tell us about the first time you came to Composer's Voice, how you came acquainted with us? That was um, the piece that I did for uh, Suzanne and then Thomas, cello and clarinet piece. And I think that was for the 15 minute of fame, of course. That was uh, exactly like 11 years ago. So like 2012 was the first year I ever actually, you know, uh, got to know about composer's voice and, um, and then, you know, started applying for it. And probably the very first shot didn't get selected, I remember. <laughs> and, then, and then, so, yeah, I think that was the second shot. 15 minutes of fame. There are 15 pieces selected. We try to select as many as we can be. Not everybody gets picked. Keep trying. Keep trying, right? Right. And then also, you know, at the time, 15 Minutes of Fame actually, you know, sounded uh, the perfect opportunity because every uh, call for score was different. And then some instruments I've never heard of. Mm -hmm. And about writing, you know, for one minute, you need to study about that instrument and then, you know, think about the ideas and then also one minute. So like, you know, you have to have a certain uh, strength, you know, like a pull, immediate attraction, you know. And so that actually trained me uh, in a way uh, that I have to have a good idea for that instrument and showcasing the idea also that the sound or the nature of that instrument uh, quickly you know, that was fun. And then also, uh, even if I wasn't selected, I just, you know, attended, you know, as many as I could, because just, you know, um, for fun. And then so, yeah, that was great. So, yeah, so you were talking about showing up for concerts that you didn't get picked for. And so, yeah, so we were doing Composer's Voice, and it was every second week. And what we were doing was presenting 15 minutes of fame, like, as a feature in the com the greater composer's voice. So we do 15 minutes of fame almost on every concert. And then we do a bunch of longer pieces. You know, I'm producing these concerts. Masatora keeps showing up and so forth. <laughs> and I think somewhere along there, we I think we asked you if you had a longer piece, right? Right. I think, yeah, that, that was the first time I ever, you know, got to, yeah, just like, you know, put my longer pieces in. And I'm trying to think, is... The first longer piece you did, it was about it was about eleven minutes or so, right? It was was that the um, no? Perhaps I think it was the um, um, maybe like a guitar and the alto flute piece. Dream, oh, dream of sailing. Right, right, yeah. Like a Dan Cooper, I think was curating uh, that whole concert. Beside that, the fifteen minutes of the film. I think that the composer's voice had uh, usually the a curator sometimes yeah like a rob were curating m most of the shows but i think you had like a guest curators on um, for like a kind of you know like a themed kind of concert i was asked and then i just had this piece so i think yeah it just went on that's the beginning time goes by we've got lots of adventures here and there and stuff like that and then all of a sudden you know a little while ago just last year i think um uh you win this award. What 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 award did you win? 
I won American Prize in instrumental chamber music. For what piece? For um, I, Manas, the trio for shakuhachi and cello and piano, which was commissioned by the Kyoshin on Arts and the nonprofit organization um, in New York. Um, they uh, promote the, the um, crossing the culture gap, uh, the, the bridging the two cultures or many cultures actually, and then um, commissions a lot of new works, including ethnic instruments, many Japanese instruments. There's a mixture of um, unique uh, Asian Japanese instrument and then also Western instruments. And how did that uh, collaboration come about? Uh, I've known James quite a long time. And then so one time um, he came to one of the concert I think that was at the Brooklyn Museum. There was this like a celebration of a new opening for their art Asian exhibition division with lots of music in the lobby. And then uh, Brooklyn Symphony had you know, one of the spots. And then, then um, I was asked um, to rearrange what I had for clarinet and the Mandarin Orchestra into clarinet and then um, string orchestra. James actually um, lives across the park and then so she, he came and to see the show and then he really liked that piece and then you know all of a sudden like after the concert oh why Master Sora I'm interested in writing you know something for us for the next season and then so that was the beginning and then that was um, a year before the pandemic right before actually that the, we get into this you know, on curfew and then, you know, the like quarantine, self-quarantine thing. Um, actually, we met together uh, that, uh, you know, um, with James and, uh, and then we had this short lecture about shakuhachi and what to do and what not to do kind of basic thing. That was in January and we still didn't know anything about COVID. And then, you know, and then even I think that the, you know, at the time, I think that the cruise ship, uh, you know, had like a, so many uh, COVID uh, positive customers. And then, you know, the Japan actually uh, did not let them, you know, in. Right. And then that the, there was a huge, uh, like, you know, um, criticism about that. And then, you know, then in February, like, you know, like a, the air, you know, that the atmosphere just changed, you know, in March. Now, you know, that's serious and everything, you know, got shut down. So it was really life altering experience that, you know, something's really happening around me. Then, you know, like um, by the time of June, like no cars, no airplanes. Right. So, and then no trains running. So it was so quiet, otherworldly quiet, only birds chirping. <laughs> and then I had to write this piece about um, something, the shakuhachi cello and piano, which is not the typical um, instrumentation either. There was uh, four key concepts. Um, to understand that piece, manas. So first, manas um, is a Buddhist term that indicates a thinking mind. And especially in Japan, uh, it is considered the strongest human instinct. The, it remains even after our senses and body die. Also, shakuhachi is strongly associated with Zen monks. And then those Zen monks traveled the land and played that instrument as a part of their discipline. So uh, they cannot talk. And then in Japanese no place, a traveling monk usually encounters this mysterious lady at an abandoned place. So this traveling monk tried to, you know, like uh, shelter himself from the rain or, you know, just uh, for the night to stay and then they find this abandoned place and then somehow you know this mysterious lady usually old lady you know like appears and then you know this monk like wonders who this is eventually it's revealed that she's a 
haunting spirit, but been there for so long, then she completely forgets why she haunts there or mm. who she was. Eventually, you know, she starts remembering who really, you know, who she really was. I started writing this piece during this COVID time. Like we just didn't know anything about it, but gradually, you know, as days go by, we started to understand what this COVID can do to the world. And the whole thing, you know, felt like um, the whole journey of getting to know something that we didn't know 